All right, what's going on, people? Let's discuss more about data types. We discussed a few in the last video, but there's a few more that you should be made aware of. So chars, they store a single character and use the percent %c format specifier to display a single character. There's an array of characters which can store one or more characters. Then to display that, you use percent %s as the format specifier. Floats, they will store a decimal number and we use the percent %f format specifier to display a floating point number. And then we have integers which only store a whole integer. There's no decimal portion. And we use percent %d to display an integer. Now along Along with floats, we have doubles. Doubles have double the precision of a float. We can store even more significant digits. Floats use four bytes of memory. They have 32 bits of precision, and we can store between six to seven significant digits. Doubles, they have eight bytes of memory, double that of floats and they have 64 bits of precision, and we can store between 15 to 16 significant digits. With my float and my double, I'm storing the first several digits of pi. I'm going to attempt to display as many digits of pi as I can with a float. So I'm going to display these. So to display a float, use percent %f and LF for a double, which means long float. Now by default, when I use printf to display a floating point number or a double, this will only display the first six to seven digits, but we can actually change that. We'll discuss more about these in the next video on format specifiers. If I would like to display even more digits, after the decimal, I will add zero point and the amount of digits I would like to display. So I would like to display 15 digits after my decimal, and I'll do that for my double as well. So after the percent sign, 0.1f, then add LF. And let's take a look at these numbers. Okay, after my two, which is, I believe, the sixth digit after the decimal, we actually lose our precision. These numbers are not the same, but our double will actually retain these numbers. So point being, a double is even more accurate than a floating point number. There is more precision, but it uses more memory. A double uses eight bytes of memory. Because of this reason, we tend to use doubles a lot more than floats just because they're more precise. We don't want to lose our precision. Next up, we have Booleans. To work with Booleans in C, include this at the top, stdbool.h. Booleans store true or false. So they work in binary. One represents true and zero represents false. So when you need to declare a Boolean variable, you type bool, then a variable name, and you set it equal to true or false. Technically, we only need one bit to represent true or false, one for true and zero for false, but this still uses up one byte of memory. And then to display a Boolean, you can use percent %d. So if I was to display this Boolean variable, I would use percent %d. So one corresponds to true and zero corresponds to false. Although there are some tricks that we can do in the future where we could display the word true or the word false. But for now, we're going to stick with percent %d as the format specifier. So these work in binary, one for true, zero for false. Now, another thing that we can do with chars is that we can store a whole integer between the range of negative 128 to positive 127. So in this example, we have char f, and I will store the integer number 100. We can display this number as either a decimal, an integer, or a character. So if I was to display this number as a character, we will use the ASCII table to convert this number to a character representation. The ASCII table has a range between 0 to 127. So if I was to display this number as a decimal using the percent %d format specifier, of course this will display as 100. But if I was to convert this to a character using the percent %c format specifier, this has a corresponding character and that would be lowercase d. So I'm actually going to change this to something else. What about, I don't know, uh, 120. So let's see what the character representation of that number is. And that would be a lowercase x. So you can use chars to store more than single characters. You can also use them to store a whole integer. However, the range is between negative 128 to positive 127 because they have one byte of memory. Now there is a keyword unsigned. So when you declare a variable that is unsigned, we disregard any negative numbers. So effectively, this doubles our range with our positive numbers. So if we have unsigned char, we can store a number between 0 to positive 255 because we know we're not going to store a negative number. 
So then if you need to display an unsigned character, we can use just percent %d. I'm going to store 255 within my unsigned char, and that would be, of course, 255. However, if we go beyond this range, this will overflow and go back to zero. So if I was to display this, we have a warning. Unsigned conversion from int to unsigned char. So then this resets back to zero. So if you go beyond the maximum range, this will reset all the way back to zero, whatever the beginning is. So if you add this keyword unsigned, you can effectively double the range of positive numbers that you can store within a variable. By default, most data types are already signed, but we don't need to explicitly type that. So point being with chars, you can store more than a single character. You can store a whole integer between ranges negative 128 to positive 127 if it's signed. If it's unsigned, you can store numbers between 0 to 255. You can display them as an integer by using the percent %d format specifier, or you could convert them to a character using the ASCII table by using the percent %c format specifier. Next, we have short ints. Short ints use two bytes of memory. They can store a number between negative 32,768 to positive 32,767 because, well, they use two bytes of memory. They can only store a number so large. And if it's an unsigned short int, the range is instead between 0 to 65,535. And we use the percent %d format specifier to display a short int. So within my printf statement, I'm going to display these two numbers. So I will display variable h and i. h is a short integer, and i is an unsigned short integer. So these are the maximum values for a short integer and an unsigned short integer. And like I discussed with chars, if we go beyond this range, we will encounter an overflow. So I'm going to change this short int to 32,768. And let's see what number displays. So this will overflow and reset this value back to the minimum value, which in this case is negative 32,768. And if you do the same thing with the unsigned short integer, that would be zero because that's the minimum value for an unsigned short integer. So those are short integers. They use two bytes of memory and they can store numbers between these ranges, depending if it's signed or unsigned. Oh, and another way of writing these, you don't necessarily need to declare these with the word int. You could just say short and that would do the same thing. People usually just call them shorts instead of short ints. So those are what shorts are. Now with integers, we kind of discussed this in the last video just briefly. Integers store a whole number between just under negative two billion to just over positive 2 billion because they use 4 bytes of memory and we use the percent %d format specifier to display a signed integer. If that integer is unsigned, the range changes from 0 to just over positive 4 billion. However, there is a different format specifier. To display an unsigned integer, you instead use percent %u. So then let's display these percent %d for a signed integer and percent %u for an unsigned integer. And these are the maximum numbers. And then if I was to exceed the range, this again would cause an overflow and reset these numbers back to their minimum values. So those are standard integers. They use four bytes of memory, so they can store numbers between these ranges depending if they're signed or unsigned. All right, the last data type we're gonna talk about for this topic is a long, long integer. Now, the reason that we have long twice is that with standard integers, these are already considered longs, but we don't need to explicitly type long for standard integers. So to represent a really large number, we can use a long, long integer. And these use eight bytes of memory. The effective range for a signed long, long integer is just underneath nine quintillion to just over nine quintillion. And the format specifier for a long, long integer, one that is signed, is percent %LLD. Now, if it's unsigned, that changes the range between zero to just over positive 18 quintillion. And the format specifier is percent %LLU. Then let's display these. So for a signed long, long integer, that is LLD. And if it's unsigned, that is LLU. Now we'll encounter a warning. 
So this warning applies to our unsigned long long integer. Integer constant is so large that it is unsigned. So one way in which we can prevent that warning is after our number within our unsigned long long integer add a u to the end of this. So then we can display this number with no warning. So since long long integers use so many bytes, they can store a gigantic number. We tend to not use long long integers very often because, well, we don't really have a need for this large of a number. But in certain circumstances you might, perhaps you're dealing with the speed of light or something, you may need to use a long long integer. But commonly we use standard integers a lot more. Well yeah everybody, those are even more C data types. We likely won't be using most of these, but you should still be made aware of their existence. I would say that we're going to focus on chars, array of chars, doubles, booleans, and integers. So pay attention to those ones, but you should still be made aware of the existence of other data types just in case you encounter them. If you found this video helpful, please smash that like button, leave a random comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.